Scientology is a good religion is because other religions get to make fun of them. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 savage Joe Rogan moments. Still too much. Get the back, get back in there. You're not done. There's ice all over the floor. What are these guys doing? When I first met you, all those yeah. people you used to hang around with, yeah. those are all toxic. And so I know you know that, that if you keep going, that's coming. For this list, we'll be looking at those razor-sharp remarks or actions that the former Fear Factor host has dished out on unsuspecting victims. Go ahead, set the savage meter to 10. While Rogan wouldn't care what entries we left off this list, sound off about your favorite Savage Rogan moment in the comments. Now let the savagery begin. Number 10. Hugh Hefner is a dork. Joe Rogan live from the belly of the beast. Kicking off this list is a deeply cutting attack on a somewhat unusual target. During Joe Rogan's early days of filmed comedy specials, the comedian quickly gained a reputation of no-nonsense and outspoken savagery. Right off the bat of his 2001 show, Rogan fires a series of shots at old guys who can't be trusted, before setting his sights on the Playboy creator, Hugh Hefner. He's a dork! He didn't just stop at the then septuagenarian either. Rogan also takes savage shots at the various Playboy bunnies that formed Hefner's entourage. It's so pathetic. They look exactly the same. You look deep in their eyes, you see the back of their skulls. <laughs> They're all the exact same length there, same clothes up. Despite referring to him as a dork, Rogan never got to meet Hefner either time he visited the Playboy Mansion and raised a glass to him when he passed. He literally had a place where guys could go to be leches. Number 9. YouTube Trolls Triggered Rogan's 2016 stand-up special featured a number of savage moments, including some hilarious shots at Scientology. But we had to give this entry to a more unusual target, YouTube trolls. Could you imagine people talking to each other like that in real life and not beating the shit out of each other? Describing them as monsters, he highlights the ridiculously over-the-top hostility of vocal haters in the comments section. As we all know, online people tend to say things that in real life they would probably tone down or just keep to themselves. But with the benefit of anonymity in the comment section, all bets are off. <laughs> Dear Jennifer, don't you think it's about time you dress a little more classy? The picture Rogan paints of them is certainly vivid and pungent. You can almost smell them. You know who's dumber than them? Me, because I read their shit and I get mad. <laughs> Number 8. Heckler Destruction. Various. It's probably not a good idea to heckle any comedian, but it's just asking for trouble to heckle a known savage such as Joe Rogan. Why are you, why, why are you yelling out like that? Did no one hug you when you were little? <laughs> the thing is, the podcaster is known for being quick with the comebacks. Plus, he's a black belt in jujitsu too. There's been footage of various times when foolhardy audience members have attempted to take a comedic pot shot at Rogan. How dare you! What did you think? Do you think you're gonna get me? Like, bro, I'm gonna point to that stain right next to this big. This show's over! But the dialogue he had with an intoxicated woman at an untelevised gig led to a legendary exchange. After intentionally handing her the mic, which is usually a big mistake for a comedian to do, Rogan decimates the poor lady. One of the most memorable clapbacks comes when she asks how he got a girlfriend. How did I get my girlfriend? I was on television. It's easy as <laughs> Number 7. Nonverbal Savagery UFC 99 The Comeback Sometimes the best moments of savagery come without words. MMA enthusiast Rogan graduated from post-match at ringside interviews to become a commentator for the Ultimate Fighting Championships. One of these octagon side segments features a really subtle but savage moment from Joe. While giving his take on camera, someone tries to walk through and thus block him in the shot. Without flinching, Rogan pretty much swats the person away with his left hand like with a fly. And all that being said, though, all that being said, Diego Sanchez facing Clay Guida tonight, <laughs> it's never an easy out. Don't ever oh, listen, step in front of camera. Somebody almost stepped in front of the camera. Yeah, with no words of apology, cursory glance, or even an etch of effort on his face, the complete lack of recognition for this hapless interview bomber is savage. Number 6. Providing play-by-play -play on spilled ice. UFC 109 Relentless. This is a disaster. Oh no, this guy, look at that, they knocked the bucket over. This is the three stooges. What are you freaks doing? After a few years of on-air interviewing, Joe Rogan made it to the booth to provide play-by-play -play commentary for the action in the octagon. Rogan's passionate style and unique voice added a totally new dynamic to the combat sport and made him a household name internationally. 
For a sample of his finest work, you don't need to see a Ronda Rousey or Brock Lesnar bout. Just tune in for his commentary on an ice spill before Torres versus Gallard. But now they're sweeping it out. That's good. Put it on the side and watch Ariane fall on her head. It's hard to tell who gets the worst of his savage attacks here. Is it the situation itself, icy conditions, or the people scrambling and failing to clear it up? All we know is that is savage. And watch the sucker open up. Oh, no. Oh, what a disaster. There's ice everywhere. They're, those corner men, someone needs to kick I their ass. Fight. Number five, look at the replay. UFC's The Ultimate Fighter 5, Team Pulver versus Team Penn finale. Sometimes being a professional savage means that the more serious moments are taken as jibes. One obvious example of this was during the finish to the Gray Maynard versus Rob Emerson bout at the Ultimate Fighter 5 finale event. Could hear that one in a big oh, slam. Yeah. Huge. Oh, he's yeah. right in the body again. Emerson showed great touch just to come out for the beginning of the second round. After a slam that appeared to render both men unable to compete, the match was ruled a no contest. It's controversial, but Rogan called it as he saw it both on play-by-play -play and while interviewing Maynard. He tapped, but you were unconscious. You knocked yourself out in the I takedown. Look at look at the replay. You're totally unconscious. Take a look at this. Look at the replay, bro. Bro, look at the replay. You picked him up. Watch the dump. Bang. You hit your head down. Now watch this. You're out. Watch He's this. Done right he, there. he is done, but Have so it. are you. Have You're it. unconscious. Although he pleads his case, Rogan won't back down, repeatedly telling Maynard to look at the replay. It's the cold decisiveness of the interview that earns the place on this list, showing that when Rogan bites down, the jaws lock. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I rolled over after he tapped. But what they're saying is because you were unconscious with the takedown that it's a no contest. But I'm not unconscious. You don't you're, understand I, what I, I'm you, So you're saying I'm that you were un never unconscious. unconscious? Never. Number four, bringing Brian Collin back to reality. The Joe Rogan experience. Here's yeah. the problem. You've talked to too many guys that let you say shit like that, and then it becomes like vernacular. Fans of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast will be familiar with recurring guests like Brendan Schaub and Brian Callen. Both men are known for their Fighter and the Kid podcast, with Schaub being a former MMA fighter, which we'll get to later, and Callen. Although no longer a host, but still appearing frequently as a guest, is a comedian best known as Coach Meller of the Goldbergs. The latter has a habit of making a few less than legitimate claims and brags. This is something that Rogan and Schaub call Callan out on, with the host stating that he blames the people Brian hangs around with. You do. <laughs> I feel sick. You do. You hang out with a lot of people that are such bullshit artists. No, I and don't. you don't. You My good friends. Do. No. You know. You know. You people. know who I'm talking about. Yep. The host is blunt and spells out in no uncertain terms that Callan just isn't the big dude he thinks he is. I met Brian in '94. He's surrounded by idiots. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Number three, Fear Factor fight. Fear Factor. Did we mention that Joe Rogan is a black belt level martial artist? He may not be the biggest dog in the fight, but only a fool would try to find out how big the fight is in the dog. On a couple's special of Fear Factor, that fool emerged. Upon losing a challenge, one contestant lashed out at another, prompting Rogan to yell that they can't hurt each other. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? You can't assault people. What are you doing? The husband gets into Rogan's face, which we're pretty sure is an official symptom of stupidity. The contestants. No, hey, hey, hey. No, hey, hey, hey. hey. No, no, hey. As Rogan looks like he's about to put Jonathan in a hangman choke, fellow contestant Mike Mizanin jumps in, scared of what the host would do to the contestant. Then all of a sudden, they start going at it. And I was like, all right, I got to break this up because Joe's going to kill him. Number two, Rogan retires Brendan Schaub from MMA, the fighter and the kid. The reality of your skill set and where you at now, I don't see you beating the elite guys. Brendan Schaub's second appearance on this list is also as a target for Rogan's savage and no-nonsense approach to many things in life. And again, savagery isn't necessarily always used for comedy, as this particular event shows. Despite recording in his JRE studio, Rogan was a guest on the Fighter and the Kid podcast days after Schaub's KO loss to Travis Brown. It's not that you don't try hard. It's not that you're not dedicated. It's not that you're not disciplined. It's not that you're not intelligent. There's shit that other people can do that you can't do. It was during this that Rogan coolly told his friend that he needed to stop fighting before it was too late. Schaub can only listen as Rogan tears into him. If you had a wrestling match with Cain Velasquez, how well do you think you'd do? Straight up wrestling? Yeah. I think people would be surprised. Really? Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm-hmm. 
I think you'd be surprised. However, sometimes, to be kind, you have to be cruel. And as Schaub announced his retirement from MMA weeks later, he credits Rogan with helping him change careers before it was too late. To be honest, I, I think that would that's the only way that you could have done it because the the ego that I had at the time, especially fighting, man, getting to that level, it was like, that ego's insane. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, fight with Carlos Menstilia, the comedy store. Joe Rogan can't stand joke stealing. So when he noticed that fellow LA Comedy Store regular Carlos Mencia seemed to be allegedly plagiarizing other comics material, Rogan started calling him Carlos Menstilia during his MC duties. I'm somebody important enough that he had to end the show by saying Carlos Menstilia. It was harmless until Mencia called him out on stage, which of course was a bad idea. Rogan complied and the two had a loud argument in front of a live audience and Rogan's camera crew. I don't want to attack, that's not true. You're a great performer who likes people Shit. While Joe was temporarily banned, his popularity and worth grew, while Mencia's, not so much. Savage rating? Annihilation. You are. No, you're not. You're not a comic. No. I am a comic. Am I a comic? Yeah. 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 Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.